Okay, we're going to start with the arm area here. Some people uh, will actually use like five minutes on the arm and hand area in a full body massage, but again, everybody's routine is a little bit different how much they're actually going to spend on these regions. So you can start by actually hand going up. It's called centipedial, going up towards the heart. Again, you can use more pressure going up towards the heart. And then less pressure actually coming back down, so you get that nice fluid flow with that then. So going up with more pressure. And then back down with a lot less pressure just to make sure that, okay? So another technique, you can actually hold the wrist, but with holding a wrist, just be careful how much pressure you're actually using because people don't realize how much pressure they're using because you um, can actually um, be a little invasive, actually too much, okay? So just lightly hold that area, and then you can actually go up the arm, and then you can come back down and around. But some people actually go up, around, you can actually go underneath the arm too then, okay? So up round, underneath then, all the way back down. Okay, next one, we're going to go, one hand's going to go down the arm, the other one's going to go up the arm. So we're going to go up, back down then. So again, you want to use more pressure going towards the heart, but every now and then you're going to have techniques that um, are not going to agree with that, but that's okay every now and then, okay? But again, it all depends on who you talk to about the belief um, with massage too, so just ask them those kind of questions. Okay, next one, we're going to actually bring up the forearm like this. And actually go down. And if you're performing it really hard, sometimes the fingers will actually open up when you're actually performing it. So um, just make sure it depends on what kind of pressure they want with this. You can also alter it going back and forth down this region then. And you can even hold the wrist and just one at a time then for this area too. So again, all depends on what kind of pressure they actually want with the techniques then. Okay, next one, I'm going to perform more of a shimmy it's called. So I'm going to actually hold here and actually hold here. Where just, I'm just going to go back and forth. You can actually go pretty fast you can even go faster than this if you can, but just again make sure it's not to the full range of motion when have these jarring movements. So more of a jostling technique, so more of those kind of movement techniques then. So you can also just hold up the arm, just move it back and forth. But if somebody's self-conscious about their tricep region, about it wiggling a lot, um, don't use this technique then. So again, it all depends on what kind of what what they feel com more comfortable with then. Next one, we're actually going to go up, and we're coming back down, we're just going to give a little pull right at the wrist area. Going up, coming back down with lighter pressure again. Next one, we're actually going to go up, and we're coming back down, we're just going to give a little pull right at the wrist area. Going up, coming back down with lighter pressure again, and then kind of pull at the wrist area. Going up, and kind of pulling. Okay, next one. Remember how we went down here and up at the same time? but you can actually incorporate more of the chest area into it too if you want. So you can go up, more of the upper chest. So just not in the breast tissue area for this. Okay, next one, call it a ratchet technique. So you're actually going to extend and slide up, okay? So if you have a person that wants a little bit more pressure and your body is not capable of giving more pressure, it's just actually performing more of a stretch and a massage all at the same time then. Okay, next one, you can actually rotate it like this, back and forth. You can go different parts of the arm. You can go in the pec region too for more pressure. And just be aware of where the arm is going just to make sure it doesn't hit you. But I'm going to go to the other side and actually demonstrate and go the other, other direction too then, okay? So you're actually going this way then. So you get a different kind of motion that then. And everybody's heard of a snake bite before. You can actually perform this on a massage and it still can be relaxing. 
So he's going back and forth with this on the arm area. Now again, if they want more pressure, just watch your body while it's reacting to it. Okay, next one, you can crank it to one side, turn it to the other side, one side, next side, one side, next side. Yeah. Okay, next one we're going to do is we're going to bring it up over the head area with the massage. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to start here, you can massage, and actually just give a little pull right like that then. And when you're in this position, what you can actually do is actually go down underneath so you can get more of the back area too. And some people what they'll do is actually have a little bit exposed so it's a little bit easier to get under right here. So you can actually even go down all the way to the lower back area all the way. So more of a longer technique. And if they want more of a stretch, you can actually have them hold on to your wrist. I hold on to their wrist. So you can traction a little bit more to get that technique then, okay? Okay. Next technique we're going to perform is actually a more broadening technique. A broadening is when you kind of separate. So what we're going to do is right in the forearm region, we're going to separate. And you can even perform it up on the bicep region too. But for women's breast tissue, just make sure the arm is up here a little bit so you're not hitting their breast tissue. Okay, and you can even get the back of the arm. This is called extensors, more hairy area. And also broaden that area too then. Okay, next one, you can actually use more of your forearm just back and forth. So this is actually an endangerment area right in the anterior part of the elbow. But with this, I'm actually just using my forearm back and forth. You can actually do a little stretch if you want to with that then, okay? Okay, remember how we performed the ratchet technique like this, went up? Now we're actually with the forearm, we're actually flexion slide, okay? Flexing the wrist and sliding. So flexing, sliding. And if you want to perform it the opposite way, extension. So palm up like this, I'm going to go down. But again, right directly in the center, it's called the median nerve. Make sure you're not using any pressure right in that area. So more either medially or laterally, so one side or the next, with the techniques, just to make sure of that. Okay, next one, we're going to perform a little bit lighter technique. We're going to go up, down underneath, we're actually going to lift up the arm a little bit. And if they're helping out, you can see the elbow's kind of locked. So if they're not helping out, when you bring it up, the elbow's going to kind of bend, coming back down then, okay? And you don't come up, lift it, and just slowly bring it out back on the table then, okay? Okay, let's get into some of the hand techniques. We'll get back to the arm. We'll actually perform a little bit of stretching. I'll show you some basic stretches for those regions. Okay, with the hand region, right in between the tendons, it's called chucking. It's a form of friction. You go back and forth kind of fast if you want, or you can actually just a slow glide in between, in between the tendons here. Then also at the wrist area, this is the extensor side, so you actually go right around the carpal bones. You can even separate right in there too. Or you can do circular friction back and forth in that area. You can also flip it over and perform more of a broadening technique right here too. So especially people with um, carpal tunnel problems, hand, wrist problems, forearm problems, concentrate in this area. So again, the median nerve, make sure you're not putting pressure right on the median nerve. It's directly center for that area then. Okay, next one, more of the palm area. You can separate the palm area works really nice. And again, um, carpenters, um, mechanics, people that are clinching up all the time with tools, this is the area that they usually need the most. 
And with this, you can also use your knuckles right into there. And you can go just back and forth, even twist, or like you're playing the piano. Okay, with the fingers, you can actually just slide the fingers. We can friction back and forth. So whenever you're performing massage techniques, try to perform it at least three times for each massage technique just to make sure um, because it takes a little while for them to actually feel it. So you can find out whether they like a technique or not. Just watch your body mechanics, watch how their body reacts. Some people actually kind of circle. This is called circumduction when it's kind of circular motion like this. So again, for each finger, for those areas. Okay, some of my favorite stretches for the palm. I'm actually going to lock it in here. So pinky. I'll put the pinky right in here, right where the thumb is. So like this. Wrap three fingers around, th wrap three fingers around over here and then actually spread the palm area. But most people just love this technique. And you can also use your knuckle, as you can see here. Just both. It's back and forth. Okay, next one's a little bit more difficult. You know, rotate the hand like this. So right in between the index and the middle finger, I'm going to put my pinky. I'm going to put two fingers in between the thumb and the index like this. Okay, and then I'll show you the other side real quick. And I'll put the pinky in here, right, in between the middle and the ring finger, and then the other finger in between the ring and the pinky like this. So again, like this, like this, so it's more of a stretch. I'm going to separate the palm area then. So it's, again, it's just more of a stretch for that region. So then you can also perform a little bit of flexion or a stretch. So remember stretching, you want to slow in, maintain it, then slow out then, okay? So again, no jarring techniques. You can also perform extension for this area. This is actually called radial deviation, more the radial bone. You can stretch it out that way or ulna deviation because this is the ulna bone over here and stretch it out that way then too then okay and then some people actually one hand going up one hand going down actually more of a traction right in the wrist area then so just back and forth you can also have hand on top and bottom Kind of separate and pull. Okay. And also circular friction with your palm in these regions. And just move it back and forth. More of a circular friction like this, then, too. You also just stretch out a finger at a time. You can even just lay the their hand on here. Have your one hand underneath, and you can use more pressure that way for the knuckles when you're using that. Then, okay. But also, again, you can use more of your palm in that area too. You can also kind of squeeze the whole hand praying for pain. You can perform it the other way too, just more, more of a stretch. You can also put your thumb right in the palm area and kind of squeeze around that then too, okay? A great technique for the palm area is actually extend the fingers and go right down the palm, okay? Extend, go out. 
Works really nice. Next one, you can just stretch out the, the thumb. You can even just wrap your thumb in here. Just get more of a stretch than that way too. So again, always make sure you know what they do for a living so you know what areas to concentrate on a little bit more too. So it actually helps them out. And right here, Asian medicine, they believe this is more of a headache point. It's called large intestine four. So you can actually stretch, um, actually compress this area. You need either circular friction or actually just hold it down. But for, for pregnant women, you want to stay away from that point. So again, if, you're, if the client is pregnant, um, stay away from that. But there are a lot of precautions with a pregnant individual, but um, mainly uh, make sure you get training for that and when you're working on pregnant women, just to be safe. Okay, then you can also kind of just rock it around a little bit, kind of shake it, the hand, and then back and forth too. You can also just do a little bit of motions back and forth in circular motion. Just to see how relaxed they are, because if they're not, it's going to just be tensed up more in that area. So you can also just use one knuckle, more in the palm area. And some people's hands are really dry. I prefer you use lotion for the hands, but some people actually use oil. But the thing is, when they're done with the massage treatment, their hands are usually all oily. So it's a lot better to actually use um, lotion for the hands and the feet, and especially when they get up off the table for their feet. Um, you're going to get oil stains on the carpet, um, and then also going to slosh around in their shoes, um, especially if they're just wearing sandals um, a nice hot summer day. Um, they're going to actually slip out of their shoes easier that way. So again, lotion, it will absorb really nice. Some people will use cream, but it's not the same as lotion for the hands and the feet. Okay, so you can also go up and down with the palm area. Then you can also incorporate more of the forearm into the hand then. Remember for circulation wise, you want to, the longer techniques, make sure you're going towards the heart. The shorter techniques, um, it's okay to kind of go any direction you want for pressure wise. Okay, that's that's for the hand area, so again, you can incorporate um, other techniques too. When we get to the back, there's many techniques that can actually be used throughout the whole body that you can actually incorporate on those areas then. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some um, stretching with the arms, some basic stretches. Okay, some stretches with the arm. Again, we showed you this a little bit, but remember when we actually massaged up like this, but you can actually just hold it for a stretch. And you can actually just hold the pec area hold it down then too that way. Or you can actually use your knuckle right in the pec area too. Or you can actually just bring it down for a stretch. So it all depends on what they can handle. Next one, we're gonna actually go is go underneath here like this, like this. So you see, if I actually have it wrapped around like this, actually pulling it down. So you can actually massage more of the tricep region, works really nice. So that's a really good stretch, but it also massage technique for that area too then. Another one, you can actually bring the arm over the body like this. And this is a nice one you can actually perform massage too. But just make sure it's not too much on the neck area, not too much more on the chest, the breast area. So it's right in between. So you're actually going like this, you're actually going up then like that. And if you want, you can actually go underneath. You can even go all the way to the vertebral border of the scapula the long part of the scapula here, you can actually kind of hook it and just give a little pull to that way. So again, you can kind of rock it too in this kind of position. And for a stretch for more of the pec area, what you can do is actually compress the pec area and just bring the arm off the table a little bit. But you can actually bring, have them scoot over to the side of the table um, if, they, if they like some of the stretching. So then you can actually bring the arm off the table more. But whenever you compress an area, it makes it a little bit easier so you don't have to work as hard then. So again, when you compress the area and stretch it out, it's going to be a little bit easier for you. Okay, next one we're going to perform. I'm actually going to go underneath here. I'm going to rotate the arm like this. Hold it like this. Okay. 
So you can actually, it's a little bit of a stretch, it depends on what they can handle. And they can actually massage right on the humerus area, the pec area, all those areas. But it works really nice. We get a little bit of difference with that because most people just leave the t um, arm on the table, they won't move it around at all. So it gives you a little bit of creativity um, so you don't get bored as much too. So, so many of us these days are getting stuck in a routine, so you can actually mix it up a little bit for those areas then. So, next one you can actually just bring it out here like this and just give a little traction, okay? But again, you can actually massage like this in a traction too. You can also kind of rock it back and forth too in different angles, different directions. Okay, some people will just kind of rock it a little bit nice and light all the way up to the stretch point and if you want you don't have to go to the actual full stretch for those areas. But again this is a really good uh, tri-step stretch for right here. Okay, So you remember when we performed it like this then. But if they are kind of flexible you can just have their head off a little bit um, actually and bring it down even more so you can get more of the tricep. But again remember how we went like this and this and kind of hooked it around to get that stretch. Okay, next one, we're going to perform right in the pec area. We're going to go like this, okay, and then I'm going to grab right under uh, the bicep tricep area. And I can actually bring it up like this. So you make a massage technique out of it too, but you stretch them out then, okay? Okay, so go down, bicep tricep area, just give a little stretch. So if you're capable, you can actually perform both arms at the same time, otherwise, just perform one at a time then, okay? Okay, just make sure you're watching your body mechanics with this, you're not bending so much with your back when you're performing these techniques. So, again, there's, um, most people don't incorporate stretches into it, but it all depends on what you'd like to.